Good morning, everybody, and this is the Morning Conversation with Trinity Lutheran Church. And just a reminder, this week we're dealing with the call of Jeremiah in our uh, lessons for Sunday. And, and in the call, God says that God will write God's law on our hearts. And I have someone here today who will share a story with us. It's Karen Adams. Hi, Karen. Hi. And Karen is a wonderful member of our congregation. She uh, helps to lead our comfort stitchers and uh, is very active in participating in a lot of our stuff along with her husband, Jim. Um, Karen, how long have you been with Trinity now? I've kind of forgot. Oh my goodness. I think yeah. it's probably 13, 14 years, maybe. Wow. Is that even possible? I know. Yeah. Yeah. I know. It doesn't feel that long. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's that's great, and and uh, you 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 did uh, something that people who live in Mount Joy might have seen is the scarf bombing that you and Comfort Stitches. Can you describe that a little bit? I just think that's a really fun thing you all do. Oh, it's just the most awesome thing that um, our Comfort Stitchers does for the community. Um, usually when, right before the weather starts to get really cold, we do what we call a scarf bombing. And it wasn't our original idea. We saw it in the newspaper. Sure. So we get permission to go to the intersection where the clock is in mm -hmm. Mount Joy. And all year our, um, our knitters and crocheters and loomers are working on scarves and hats mm -hmm. to do for this scarf bombing and then we um secretly go there one evening and we put out all the scarves hats and also gloves we have many many gloves that we purchase the gloves but at mm -hmm. least they're there for kids and adults to well, sure yeah and then this year we did it on the fourth Friday and it was also Halloween downtown for the kids and it worked perfectly. And our comfort stitchers, uh, we just had, we had hundreds of over a hundred scarves, wow. close to a hundred hats, um, probably 80 pair of gloves and everything was gone except maybe 30 pair of gloves and um, two scarves. Wow. and maybe six hats or something like that and um we also had a really neat thing happen i don't know if you want me to tell sure, about yeah, that yeah but um carrie ann henry uh texted me and said that she read on facebook which i am not on right. and uh that a, a mom said her daughter went there they were there and someone came and just grabbed up a whole armful of hats and scarves and walked mm -hmm. away. Right. And in the past, we as a group have decided to give those people grace because we believe that they need, they are taking them for someone and right. someone who needs them are gonna get them. Right. So this mom said she was really sad because her daughter could not find a scarf or hat specifically for a little girl. And they were, her daughter was sad about that. She's only eight years old. Sure. So Carrie Ann sent it to me and I said, we will make sure that she gets a hat and a scarf. <laughs> so two of us knitted hats and scarves and then we asked what her favorite color was. We gave her a choice. And then Carrie Ann was the contact person. I met the mom over in the church parking lot and she took the bag and I saw this little girl in the back seat of her car put uh, this hat on and then she waved to me uh, <laughs> and i thought i was just gonna sit there and cry well sure uh, you know but it's so cool how um you know i'm not a facebook fan but how it happened through facebook through carrie ann sure. got to me i got to another knitter and we took care of it and i think uh we just bless the community with our ministry constantly does that yeah, it, it's it's a wonderful ministry, and I'm getting messages, by the way, right now from our college freshmen who get scarves, that oh. make, and they are so excited. And I remember oh, my own, good. and I remember my own kids getting them. They're just wonderful. But um, you also had a story, though, about um, you know our text talks a little bit about how we will realize God's love for all people in our hearts, and you you have a really interesting experience in your life with foster care yes when we lived in maytown 
Mm -hmm. and it was in the 80s um our youngest daughter was probably three years old by then and um at that time because of how our children are spaced out mm -hmm. we were considering having another child okay. and um i really wanted another child and jim was kind of like you know everybody's fine i don't think we should tempt fate um right. he wasn't happy about that right. so because of that void in me to continue having children one of my neighbors was a social worker with children and youth and she said i think you and jim should be foster parents and i was like i don't think we can do that but yeah. and then she told us about the program and everything and we thought wow this is something that we can it would be mutually beneficial that we could um, take care of these kids and naively we thought that we were going to we said our age group was from one to three but we specifically requested babies while they were waiting to be adopted okay. well that is a joke <laughs> because there are i mean that is that's not the group that needs people to care for them right and it was such a great experience for us we had i mean it was a sad heart-wrenching experience but and it gave us a lot of knowledge um it was excellent for our kids our kids just talk about it still hmm. about the child that we had the longest right and um the ones that we also had for very short times right. but we had foster kids we had nine of them over three years okay. the one that stayed the longest was with us two and a half years went back to his um, family could not go back to his parents at one point we thought we were going to adopt him and um, we weren't allowed to at that time and then there was an issue a year later Mm -hmm. And they asked us to adopt him. And um, unfortunately, Jim and I decided it would not be good for our family, for the way he came back to us wow. and the child that he had changed into. Mm -hmm. And I do have one story also that okay. um, relates to that, which, oh my gosh, I, cannot, I could just cry. Um, our, mm -hmm. The last child that we had for the longest was Matthew. And <clears throat> he went back to his um he went to his aunt they took uh custody of him until emancipation now that was at three years old we had to go to court twice and all this stuff which was also a good experience for us mm -hmm. um to see how that works and um it, hel it helped us to constantly be advocates for kids which we were before but we really feel it felt it a lot after that but one day i was in lancaster shopping and um i went the wrong turned the wrong way mm -hmm. and i thought i'm a person that if i'm going down a street that i don't know and i feel like i'm in a safe area well i'm just going to see where the street goes and i think that i can get <laughs> home from here Okay. So I kept driving and um, I came to a red light and I was sitting there and just looking around and I looked to my left and here is Matthew oh. with his mother walking mm. down the street. And at that point he was six years old. Oh. He was not supposed to be with his mother. Mm. Um, he was only allowed to be with his aunt and uncle. He was not supposed to be with his parents at all, okay. but he was skipping. Uh, and I think that God made me see that yeah. that day that he was okay. And yeah. God's going to take care of Matthew. Uh, and um, it was just, it just kind of, uh, it was like closure for me because mm -hmm. um, when he left, I felt like it was like losing a child. And that's how I got involved in school bus driving and yeah. working as a health aide at the school. So, which was great also because i got to spend time with kids but um that's my story and my husband oh. just supported he was right there mm -hmm. with me through the whole thing and was great with the kids and just treated them like they were part of our family which they were when they lived mm -hmm. here sure 
Well, that, that's amazing. And I mean, I think, you know, the, the, the affirmation of seeing Matthew skipping down the, the, the street, you know, you made that possible in your own way. And, and that's awesome. That's just awesome. I, I think when we deal with situations like the ones you encounter in fostering, we find that we have to meet people where they're at. We have to meet these kids where they're at. And it not only expands our horizons as human beings, it also realizes that when you meet someone where they're at, that's where God is at. You know, we didn't yeah. see it until we opened our eyes and looked. Right, right. But that's and where God so is. People with so many problems, you know, abuse mm -hmm. problems and drug and alcohol, and right. they're not bad people. Right. I mean, you could see through that, we could see how they are struggling, how families sure. are struggling. Sure. Which also leads me to now through COVID, mm -hmm. um, I just have this weight on my heart about um, families who uh, were struggling to begin with. Right. And um, with the school situation, and if you're a mom that's working at Giant, you can't say, well, I can't come into work today because I don't have childcare. You know, right. yeah. it's just horrendous for those people. So, and, and 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 a lot of us don't realize how how thin the margin is be, between being in you know in trouble or in 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 a really rough situation and being what what really is privileged and especially with drug and alcohol abuse that can happen to anyone and times like this make it really really difficult oh my so, goodness so it is more important than ever that we love each other and take care of each other just you know, we, we say on staff all the time, the person in front of you is Christ. Try to do something in that moment. And that'll, that will be the, sometimes the best we can do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Karen, this has just been a lovely conversation. And, and uh, thank you. Very inspiring, frankly. So thank you so much. Thanks You're for welcome. all you do. You're all right. welcome. All right. Have a great day. Okay. <laughs> yes. Have a great day. Everybody have a great you day. Too. <laughs>